to International Christian Center Mombasa. From wherever you're watching us from, maybe it's Raya TV, YouTube, Facebook, or ICC Mombasa Live. We are glad that you are here. Welcome to church today, fourth Sunday of the month of August. It's such a special Sunday for us, and we are glad that you could join with us today. I would like us to go ahead and begin the service. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Such an opportunity to get to be in church, to get to fellowship one to another, even if it's online, oh Lord, and I pray that you will minister to us, that you will reach out to us, and we will have a good time just hearing your word, just worshiping you at your feet, giving, you know, as, as, as a way of worship, oh Lord, and I pray today that may you do a special thing right here in our midst. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to church today. Go ahead and invite your family and friends and let's have church. Here's the music team.
will speak of our end, our unending love for you, O oh God. We love you with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength. We love you, O oh God. And it is a joy to sing songs of praise to you, to honor you, not just with our lips, but with our hearts too. We love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Amen.
from your love, O oh God. Yes, Lord, we adore you. We adore you because you are our God and our Father and we have no other God. And today, Lord, I pray that you will meet with us, Lord, that you will reveal yourself afresh to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, what a beautiful song that was, you know, just coming to our Father and telling him that we adore him and just loving on him and loving on who he is. And I would like us to talk about something here for a moment. You know, when you tell someone you adore them, there has to be a relationship, right? There has to be, it's supposed to be at that point where we know someone, we spend time with them, or we are drawing closer to them. And I know, you know, this season has been so hard for all of us. All of us, it does not matter who you are. It has been hard for presidents, it has been hard for, especially politicians, it has been hard for doctors, it has been hard for mothers, it has been hard for Joakali people, you know, if you're in Kenya, you would understand, as in hustlers. You know, it has been hard for any kind of a person, not a child, not a teenager, not an adult, no matter the profession, even persons, it has been hard for every person. And I know we have found ourselves in situations where even it comes to a place where even when we are just worshipping God, we just do it because subconsciously, you know, we do it because I, I need to do it. It's just a song, let me just go ahead and sing it. But we're not careful to just listen, to just digest the words we are singing, to allow the words simmer and sink in, you know, and think about them and think about what am I singing, what am I telling God. It just becomes out of memory or out of just lip service to God. And sometimes because of what we go through, the seasons we find ourselves, we are absent, absent minded when we are in the presence of God. And I don't know if that's where you have found yourself today. And the Lord today was reminding me that, you know what, Sheila, I am present. My daughter, I am present. I am present right there where you are. I am present even when you're absent-minded. I am present right there. Why? Because I love you. And I just want to remind us that today, that God loves us. That God loves us so much, so deeply, so vast, so deep, so high, that we can never even equate, we can never fathom, we can never even imagine. It does not matter where you find yourself, God loves you. Listen to the word of God. John chapter 15, from verse 15 says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all the things I have heard from my father I have made known to you. Listen to this, this is the part I wanted to get to. You did not choose me, but I chose you and anointed you, and that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the father in my name he will give it to you he will give it to you we did not choose god god chose us first he loved us first we are precious to him he has precious thoughts over us he is loving he is close and that's how he desires of us to be so i do not know if you found yourself drawn away from god or being um, or, or just feeling like this season has been so hard i don't know if god is here god says draw closer to me and i draw closer to you and I want us to just ask God right now, God, come and draw me closer to yourself today. Come, Lord, and reveal yourself afresh to me today. I recognize that you love me. And I want to declare that I love you, Lord. And I pray today, may my relationship with you begin afresh. Even when I sing, Lord, may I be aware of what I am saying. Help me, Lord, to come to that place where, Lord, even when I am not in the, in the right feelings or in the right mood, that I remember that I am loved by you and you are present. You are present right there with me no matter where I go. And so my Father, I pray, reach out to us, minister to us, and remind us of your love today. Because Lord, you are our only Father. And so I pray may your love be so present to us today. May it reach out to us today. And may we remember we are your friends, loved, cherished, value and you matter to you. We thank you for being a good father to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, remember today, God loves you. You are valuable. He is your father and he's present right there with you. Why don't you reach out to him, draw closer to him, and he'll draw closer to you. I would like to invite us right now to rise up on our feet as we declare this declaration song to God and just declare of his love for us. Come on, let's do that together. Come on, I am doing exactly that, so let's do that together.
We would like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. All of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. I will repeat that, 488508. For account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can also give through our equity bank till and the till number is 488508. If you would like to give through PayPal, Sendwave, Wildremit, Simba or any other app that you can use, the details are also on your screen right now. Our bank account number is 100,000 and our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. Our SWIFT code is on your screen. And our PayPal email address is info at iccmombasa.org. Info at iccmombasa.org. Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. beloved it's a wonderful opportunity that God has given us once again that we may be able to partake from his table from the table of his word man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from God and so it is a beautiful opportunity for us it's a privilege for me and an honor 
uh, to be here to present this word before you this morning. I believe that you are having a great so service so far, and God is ministering and speaking to you. Uh, today, this morning, we continue in our sermon series in this month of August, Soaring. This being our fifth week, uh, we are so delighted because we are talking about getting to that level that God has for us. It's not that we are rising to another step, but we are looking to soar with God, to get where God is calling us to be, to that level where he has purpose for us. And if I may take you back to last week, we are uh, simply talking about ensuring that we have a, a healthy mental state. Uh, it is very, very uh, key. It is a big problem nowadays in society, in our world today. There are a lot of uh, mental breakdowns. People are undergoing so much pressure, a lot of mental pressures. And we were looking at his word and we were saying that we will not allow distra uh, distress, depression, and pressures of life to cause us to live uh, no, no, or rather to cause us not to live in the fullness of God's purpose for our lives. You know, we should never let, this is what we said, we should never let the presence of storms or darkness or pain cause us to doubt the presence of God. And so whatever it is that you may go through in life, never doubt the presence of God. God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. He's an omnipresent God. He's always there, and he'll be there to help you. He'll be there uh, to lift you up. And so this week also, as we continue, as we uh, uh, conclude our sermon series, because this is the last Sunday of the month, I just want to uh, pause there for a moment and ask us to pray so that we can commit God's word. Uh, for us and commit ourselves so that we may receive, that he may open our hearts, he may open our ears and our understanding. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you for the opportunity to hear, to see, and to read from your word today. We pray that God will cause our ears to be open, our hearts to understand, open our eyes to see that which you have prepared for us. I pray that God, in the name of Jesus, you will cause us as we have purposed. You will cause us through the word that we will receive today to soar to that level that you have given us and you have purpose for us. We invite you into this session that you may lead us by your spirit. Take over, Lord, and because we need you and be all that we need to hear today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying. Uh, and as we do so, I just want to, to invite us and to remind us that every Tuesday uh, from 7.30 p.m. is our most important service. Every Tuesday from 7.30 p.m. is our most important service, and that is the prayer service. It's happening uh, online on, 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 uh, on our social media page, particularly YouTube. And uh, you can join in by logging in to iccmombasa.org. And once you get to that website, click on ICCM Live, and you will be taken into their prayer service. Just like last Tuesday, the last two, two, two weeks, we've been, we have shifted our prayer service from 6 p.m. to 7.30. So remember, 7.30 uh, p.m. to 8.50, there are about 7.30 to 8.50 p.m. is our prayer service. And so don't forget, remember that the most important prayer uh, service in ICC is our prayer service on Tuesday. And also I'd just like to remind us that we, have, we are in a season of prayer and fasting, and today is day number 29. 28 days are gone, and today is day number 29, 11 days to go. And um, we, are, we are continuing to pray, to believe, uh, to trust God, to seek God, that we may actually get to that place that he has called us. 
And so every morning during this period, we've been having prayer devo uh, devotions at 6 a.m. We've been having devotions every day at 6 a.m. in the morning. And we close the day at 8 p.m. on prayer uh, with a prayer circle that is happening via Zoom. It is happening only via Zoom. And God is answering prayer. Uh, God uh, is ministering to people. And so we invite you to join in and be, that, uh, be part of that uh, a session that God may bless you and speak and minister to you. And so on this last Sunday of August, uh, we, as we conclude our sermon series, today we just want to look about, about uh, on something about uh, avoiding the snares that can cause us to patch, you know, at a place that will tempt us or cause us not to soar or to accomplish what God has called us to do, to avoid those snares uh, that will cause us to patch uh, at a place that will cause us not to accomplish, accomplish what God has called us to do. Many of us, you know, tend uh, not to soar with God. We, we end up not soaring to that level because we, we took off, you know, just like an eagle. You take off, but uh, before you get to that height that you are supposed to reach, you get a place to patch, and that is where you settle. And so we are saying today that we are not going to settle for that. We are not going to stop. We are not going to be tempted. And so we will look at things that can cause us to fail to soar up. What is it that can cause us to fail to soar up to that height and to that level that God has for us? And so I want us to focus uh, turn your Bibles in the book of First Samuel, First Samuel, chapter one, because we are going to focus uh, on verse one to twenty. The story is found in First Samuel. Our reading today is in in the book of First Samuel, chapter one, from verse one to twenty. And so we are going to look at three things, uh, three things that will cause us not to end up soaring and living and doing all that God has for us. And so we must guard against this and determine that today that we are rising above all these hindrances and soaring and going with God. As we have shared this month, we are soaring in believing God for the miraculous and refusing to live for the ordinary and mundane. We are going to the extraordinary life that God has for us and we must fight off anything that will hold us and keep us from soaring. And so if you've put your finger there on 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1 from verse 1 to 20, I just want to recount uh, the story. This is a very interesting story. And so we look, uh, this story is about a woman called Hannah uh, who was barren. She was barren and the Bible says that God God himself had closed her womb and therefore she could not have children because her womb was closed. She desired, she wanted, she longed to have children, but God closed her, her womb. And so she was, because of this, she was constantly under ridicule by her co-wife and um, this co-wife actually kept provoking her time and time again and causing her a lot of grief and pain. And so, as we look and as we focus uh, on Hannah, let us not be easily impressed by the things that come easily because those things tend to have little impact upon our lives. Because we are focusing on Hannah. Sometimes we find that there are those things that come into us easily, but those things do not have much or a lot of impact in, in our lives. It is some. It is those things that we struggle for, that we fight, that we work hard for. Those are the things uh, that seem to have a, a great impact and bring us to, to a significant, or rather bring a significant change in our lives. And so think about that. Uh, the Bible says uh, when, when we look at that story, we see that God uh, 
chose, or rather, it was his plan, and he closed Hannah's womb. It was not because he did not want her to have a child, because that is the question. Did God not want Hannah to have a child? But we can see how she ended because of that situation. Uh, she wanted, God wanted her to pray. And Hannah prayed. Hannah prevailed. Uh, and he, she sought the Lord. And she pleaded uh, with the Lord so that she can get uh, a baby. In those days we see also uh, that the word of God was rare. The word of God was rare and the vision of God was rare. Uh, it is read according to 1 Samuel chapter 3 of the same book and verse 1. We see that God's word was rare. And so uh, I believe God wanted that to change. He was looking for a partner, somebody that is going to work with. And so he was looking for a woman. He was looking for a woman who would be desperate enough in prayer to believe to believe him for a son and who would be willing to dedicate that child, that son, to him. And so God closed the, uh, Hannah's womb because he had a purpose for her. He had a purpose in Hannah. And he found in her someone who was willing to soar with God to the height that, uh, that God wanted her to reach. And so, are you willing to soar with God? Just like Hannah, are you willing to soar with God, to be the one who does not settle for less, to be the one who does not give up to ridicule, uh, who does not want to give up to accusations and disqualifications uh, of people? Are you there? Are you that person who is willing? Are you willing to pray through until you soar through, soar above to the level that God has for you? Are you willing to persist? to keep going, to keep seeking, to keep pursuing all that God has for you and has called you to. And I believe your answer and my answer is yes. I believe that uh, God is still looking for partners even today, co-workers who are going to stand and work together with him. Remember, even in the Bible, uh, in the, one of the letters of Paul to the Corinthians, I believe, he said we are co-workers together with, with Christ. We are co-workers. And so God is engaging us uh, in all those situations so that we may be able to work together with, with him. And so God has given many different calls so that they can accomplish his will and purpose. And so when God wants to do something here on earth, he partners with someone. He partners with someone. He partners with someone. And uh, we can see that it is through Eve's seed that God would crush the serpent's head. It was through the, 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 the seed of the woman that God used to crush the head of the serpent or the head of the, of the devil. And it is through Abraham that God say that he will bless all the nations of the earth. And so God is partnering with people. And through Moses, he delivered the children of Israel. And through Joshua, he caused them to conquer the land of Canaan. And so God is still looking for partners today who will sense his call, see the dream he's giving, and determine that nothing will stand in the way of, or, or delay them in any way. Men who are determined to soar with God. Men and women who are determined to soar with God. And so Hannah did not allow her closed womb to cause her to believe that she was not going, or rather she was not meant to be a mother. She did not allow that. And so you and I also, just like Hannah, we need to push through the closed wombs of our lives and situations, the difficulties in life, the challenges we face, uh, until we come through into the fullness of God's purpose, soaring with him into our destiny. Hannah dealt uh, with these following three things. Remember I told you we have three lessons, three situations that we need to overcome. And this is what Hannah dealt with, looking at that uh, story in first samuel chapter 1 from verse 1 to 20 and uh, 
she dealt with each one of these, and we also need to deal with these same situations so that we can persist through and get to the place that God has for us and ensure we birth the things that God has for us. Number one, Chana did not settle for Elkanah's encouragement. She did not settle for her husband's encouragement. And Elkanah was her husband. And when he saw her, he, he, he loved Hannah and he valued her so much. And uh, she kept on uh, as she was uh, in anguish and she was in pain. Her husband saw that and he sought to encourage her. And, uh, and as he sought to encourage her because he loved her and accepted her, uh, he, he told her that I am more important to you than ten sons. You know, he sought to encourage his wife and sometimes we may settle for that encouragement. We may settle for less than God's purpose for our life because we settle or we end up uh, receiving Elkanah's encouragement. Let us call it Elkanah's encouragement because Hannah is what she received. When someone tells you, oh, your business is okay, your car is good, you are healthy, and also many praises that will cause you to settle at a level that God has not prepared for you, that will cause you to settle at those things that God has not purposed for you, that will cause you to settle at a standard that is well below the standard of God for your life. And so you need to avoid, you need not to settle at that place of Elkanah's encouragement. The praises and encouragement of men can be so dangerous sometimes, more dangerous uh, to us than the ridicule and attack of the enemy. You know, praise can cause you to settle and encouragement because it will cause you not to push harder in prayer or more fervently. Uh, and it will cause you to feel that you are accomplished and you are okay. And, you, and so you will, it will cause you to give up and not to pursue and not to push on. And so Elkanah encouraged his, his wife Hannah to, uh, to, to accept her situation and her condition of barrenness. But let me tell you, Hannah did not settle there. She kept on praying and pursuing God because she knew and she had purposed in her heart that I need and I'm going to birth a son. And because of that, Samuel, God gave us a prophet, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. Without uh, Hannah's pursuing and not settling at that place of encouragement, had she settled for that place, we would not have such a great prophet in Israel today. And so let us not settle, let us not stay there, and we let us pursue that dream, that ministry, that purpose that God has buried deep in you. It needs to come out. It needs to be pursued. And so don't settle for anything that can entice or ensnare us. Any encouragement that ensnares and, uh, and entices us to miss our pursuit of that which God has. And so remember, do not settle for Elkanah's encouragement because Hannah did not settle. The second point is she did not give in to Penina's provocation. Penina was her co-wife. Remember, Elkanah had two wives. The one was Hannah, the other was Penina. And Penina had children. She was blessed with sons and daughters. And so every time she was taunting Hannah, she was provoking her, making her to feel inferior, making her to feel that she's not important, provoking her to a lot of bitterness so that she can be praised because God had blessed her or rather she had children. She was blessed with the fruit of, of the womb. And so many people also, sometimes we can find ourselves in a situation where we are, fa we are facing Penina's kind of provocation. We end up quitting and giving up where we, we think that we are not supposed to bring forth or we are not good enough, we are not able, others are better. But Hannah did not give in. She did not allow Penina to provoke her to a point of giving up. 
she did not allow Penina to provoke her not to get into the presence of God. She turned her pain into a pursuit of God. And so she pursued God. She pursued him. In pain and under pressure, she made a promise to God. Give me a son and I will give him back to you. Give me a son and I will give him back to you. That is all that God was waiting for. That is all that God needed to hear. That is all that God was leading Hannah to proclaim. That place that Hannah would say, now give me a son and I would give him back to you. And so God blessed Hannah with a son, a great prophet that would move the nation of Israel, a great prophet that God had moved or rather used uh, upon the children of Israel and to cause them uh, to, to and pave the way for the kingdom of God in that nation. And so do not allow pressures, the pain and provocation and prodding of Penina, of the enemy, to cause us or to cause you to, 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 to give up on your pursuit, our praying and our promises. But rather, we need to be provoked by this to pursue instead. Instead of giving up, let us pursue and press in until we see the birthing of God's promises and purpose in our lives. And third, the third point is, the third situation is that Hannah did not give up because of Eli's error. Eli was the priest uh, at that time. And when they came into the uh, temple in Shiloh, uh, when Hannah was praying, Eli uh, accused her because she was praying quietly, in silent. He was, she was so much in anguish and torment. And Eli thought that he was, she was drunk. And so he insinuated that she was not worthy. She was a wicked woman, a drunkard, and then coming to expose her drunken behavior in the presence of God in the sanctuary of the Lord. But that is not the reason. That was not the truth. And so she did not give up. She did not give up because of Eli's error. Even though he condemned her because he did not know and uh, because he, he did not hear her, Hannah continued to, 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 do, to pursue the Lord. And she corrected him. And so it does not matter what people say about you. Because people will say things about you which are not true. They may accuse you of many things. They will uh, gossip about you. They will try to intimidate you. They will call you names. They will say all sorts of things. But do not allow that to cause you to give up. Do not allow that to cause you to be de uh, dejected and rejected. But rather, that lesson from Hannah, let it cause us to press in so that we may soar. Hannah said, I'm not a wicked woman, but a woman who is deeply troubled. And so she took her troubles to the Lord, and because she refused to settle or give in or give up, she was greatly rewarded. She soared with the Lord and birthed one of the great prophets of Israel. And so as we conclude today, allow me to say like Hannah, we need to refuse to settle for the encouragement of men uh, to settle for less. We need to soar up with God where we, he desires us by being determined to push through. There is something that God is doing in our day. There is something around the nations of this earth. And you and I need to be there to be involved and be those that God uses greatly. We need to soar with God for God is ready to go with us and to use us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word today. And as we come to the conclusion of our sermon series, I pray may your word dwell richly among us. That which you have taught us today and throughout this month, that Lord will cause us to soar and to rise up to the level that you are calling us to. We bless you, Lord. And we invite you. We will not give up, but we will press through until we get to where you have called us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. God bless you and the Lord be with you. Bye bye. Jina langu ni naitwa Askofu Alphonse Marobaya wa kanisa Anglikana Jimbo la Mombasa. Nataka kuhamasisha watu kuhusu upandaji miti. Unapoangalia taifa letu la Kenya ile tunaita forest cover iko chini ya asilimia saba Na kwa hivyo Kenya kwa pole pole inaelekea kuwa jungle. Na hii ni athari kwa maisha ya wakazi wa taifa la Kenya na hata majirani pia. Kwa hivyo mwito wangu kwa makanisa na jamii ni kwamba tuchukulie kupanda na kukunza miti kama sehemu ya mwito wetu katika uh, utumishi wetu kwa kanisa na kwa jamii. Biblia iko wazi katika historia ya uumbaji kwamba Mungu alitengeneza mazingira mazuri sana na kawaamuru wazazi wetu wa kwanza Adam na Hawa kwa ya chunga mazingira. Lakini baada ya dhambi kuingia basi tumekuwa walafi. Tumekata miti, tumeharibu miti na kwa kufanya hivyo tumewafanya wanyama wa porini hawana makao. Tumefanya kwamba mito inakauka na pia magonjwa ambayo yanaambatana na mazingira yameongezeka tena imeleta ufukara kwa sababu miti yenyewe huwa ni sehemu ya ajira ya mwanadamu kwa hivyo kuna athari mbaya zaidi ambazo zimetukondolea macho usipochukua hatua ya kuitikia mto huu wa kupanda miti kama maandiko matakatifu yanapotuagizi na tena tunahimiza watu wachukue kupandaji miti kama sehemu ya maisha yao katika mashamba yetu katika uh, compound zetu sehemu tunazoishi tupande miti ili kujokoa na janga ambalo linakutokombolea macho kwa hivyo huo ndio mto wangu kwa jamii kwa taifa la Kenya kwa makanisa na itasisi zote za kidini na mbazo za kidini kwamba tujiunge katika mwito huu wa kupanda miti asanteni Mungu awabariki